Hello everybody, I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to flip gravity in our platform game. So it's kind of like games like VVVVVVV, or however you say that. Um, this is going to use the platform movement object, so make sure you have that in your frame. And I already went and set up some uh, aspects of this game. I have a player object, which is just an active object named player currently. And I have these backdrops, which are set to obstacles, so make sure you do that. So the first thing you're going to, you're going to want to do is to set up <coughs> your uh, platform movement object controls and initiation. So we'll do start of frame. We need to make sure that at the start of frame that we set this player object to be the platform movement object. We also need to do some collision testing. Collisions. And as you know, we do that by collision testing, test for obstacle overlap, and then we find out if the player object is overlapping a backdrop. If that is true, then we go to this here and we say collisions object does overlap with an obstacle. Now we're going to need to have some inputs for left and right movement. Oops. <clears throat> so repeat while the keyboard is pressed right, and repeat while the keyboard is pressed left. And these are going to be our user inputs, holding right input key, holding left input key. Okay. So the way that we're going to uh, control gravity state is using a flag. We're going to put the flag inside of our player object. <clears throat> or we're going to use a flag inside the player object. Flags are, all objects have flags. I'm not sure how many they have. We can actually find out real quick. Uh, flags, is flag on? It doesn't seem to stay. Let me see if I, let's go to 999. Okay, you can, it seems you can have a, a ton of flags. So anyway, <clears throat> we're going to control the state of gravity by a flag inside of our player object. We're going to use flag zero, because why not? So let's say uh, gravity state. So <clears throat> we're going to ask if flag zero is off, which is the default state. If it is off, we're going to set the gravity to be, you know, whatever you want your default gravity to be. So we'll say 30. And then <clears throat> what we're gonna do is have it so that if the flag is on, if it's been flipped, if it is on flag zero, then we're gonna set the gravity to be negative 30 or what, the negative value of whatever you put in for your gravity value. So let's find that uh, gravity. We're gonna set that to be negative 30. <clears throat> now we need to actually flip the gravity. So what we're going to do is under inputs, we're going to add another event. And we're going to say upon pressing the X key. And what we're going to do there is go to our player object, click on flags, and we're going to toggle flag zero. So every time we press X, it's going to toggle the flag zero from on to off or off to on. Let's see if this works. Okay, so right now our guy can move left to right. You press X, and there you go. So uh, it does function, but there is an issue right now. You can flip gravity in air. And so if that's something you want to do, you're done for the most part. Um, you still have to set up your animations, but uh, VVVVVVV does not do that. You can only flip whenever you touch or are currently in contact with the backdrop. So the easiest way to deal with that, we're going to create another object, another active object. We're going to name this Hitbox. <clears throat> And we're going to make it into a red box. <laughs> and we need to make sure this box is a little taller than our, our player. Our player is 32 pixels tall, so we're going to go with, I don't know, 36 pixels tall. <clears throat> what we're trying to do is we're going to have this object follow our player. Let's recenter the hotspot real quick to the very center. Whoa. There we go, to the center. Um, anyway, we're going to have this always follow our player, and we're going to check to see if it's colliding with a backdrop. If it is, then our player is colliding with the backdrop, and we can then activate the flipping. So let us put 
goes here. Oh, it's, oh what am I saying? Um, hitbox. <clears throat> Always, and we are going to set the position of our hitbox to be relative to the position of our player. Let's see if that follows properly. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it, it's overlapping the, the down, uh, the lower platforms, and now it's the top of it's overlapping the upper platforms. So now we can add to the upon pressing X event, we can add another stipulation. So we're going to insert, and we're going to say, is the hitbox colliding, overlapping a backdrop? <clears throat> so we can only flip the state of gravity when we are uh, touch currently touching a backdrop. So let's go ahead and make our hitbox invisible. <laughs> no longer visible at start so it's not overlapping our player all right let's try flip we can't flip an air so it worked <clears throat> so so far so good everything's working out uh, the downside right now is we have to have extra frames of animation to deal with uh, the direction of our player for being upside down and whatnot because unfortunately click team fusion doesn't currently have negative scaling that would make it super easy if it did but it does not so uh, let's go into our player object. Let's copy it. We'll add a left direction. And we're going to flip it. So now he's facing left. Now uh, we're going to let the stopped animation be when gravity is normal. And we're going to make walking for upside down. So let's flip him that way. And we need a left. So let's flip him both horizontally and vertically. Okay, so we need to set directions whenever the player presses a key. So whenever the, uh, we can do this on the input. So repeat while right arrow is pressed. <clears throat> we're going to go to our player object and uh, we're gonna go on direction. We're gonna select direction to the right. We can drag that down here for left, edit it, and select that so it's facing left. Um, okay, so <clears throat> the gravity states. When internal flag zero is off, that is when gravity is normal. Uh, we are going to set the animation to be stopped, which is uh, what we have for regular, for, for right side up. And then we're going to drag this down and edit it, and we're going to set it to walking whenever the internal flag zero is on. So this should work. And there we go. Now you will have to add more animations and kind of add more stipulations to uh, the animation states. Um, you know, to have walking animations and whatnot. But this, for a very basic game, this works. Let's throw in a couple more platforms just to see, see how it looks, see how it plays. Let's run the frame. Okay, yeah, it seems to work pretty good. It's really responsive. Our guy faces the right way, and uh, he, the gravity flips and whatnot. So that is how you make the basics of a game like V V V V V V V V. Uh, it might be too many V's there. Um, VVVVV also had uh, what I call panel scrolling. So I'm going to do another tutorial later that shows you guys how to do that. That's scrolling that when you ever you cross the threshold of a panel, it just pops over one screen width uh, to the right or the left, wherever you went. <clears throat> so I'll show you guys how to do that later in the future. But uh, for right now, this is how you uh, switch gravity in a platform movement game. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them uh, in the comments. <laughs> and uh, I'll try to get back to you guys and answer, answer any questions you might have. Uh, Alright, that pretty much sums it up. So you guys have a good one, and thank you for watching.